big names to watch here. You know, obviously, the teams to watch is number nine ranked San Francisco USF. They have uh, a returner, Charlotte Taylor, who won the NCAA crown at 10K and also competed at Worlds. Iowa State, number 17, and number 19, Michigan State, which should be a really great matchup of those top three teams in the women's D1 race. And out on the screen here are top of individuals to watch. Charlotte Taylor, USF, number 16. She won the NCAA crown in the 10K at the Outdoor Championships, which was the first title in program history. We also have Kaylee Logue of Iowa State, a recent graduate, uh, high school graduate, one of the top runners on Iowa State's program. She will be an interesting runner to watch in this race. Probably knows the course very well. Iowa State's number 17, and they boasted the number 15 recruiting class, which included Logue, Amanda Vestry, Sarah Leinheiser, and Carly Ackley. So Iowa State uh, really understands how they need to race. They're going to have a strong contingent here at the Lay Holstead course. Michigan State enters with the top returners, Holly Bolo and Jenny Rogers, who led a reloaded group of Spartan women, including impact freshman and footlocker finalist India Johnson. So Michigan State's going to be led by some strong runners, too. We're about to get going at the women's gold 6K here. And we're going to send you off here soon. are at the line and we are off women's 6k action that massive start in the beginning leads to a little bit of a bottleneck see some of the top teams already making their move to get to the front it's JMU on the outside it looks like USF out in front there. Charlotte Taylor to your left. She has a teammate right beside her. And really important here to maybe establish where you need to position yourself in the opening stages of this race. And USF has done a great job in the beginning here. It looks like they have five near the front pack here, led by Charlotte Taylor in front. Fantastic job getting out. Callie Logues to the right of your screen in the maroon jersey. It's like leading Iowa State. But so far, 90 seconds into this race, USF. Really controlling where they want to go, how to position themselves, how to execute. As the course narrows, you really have to find where you need to place yourself in this course. But USF did a magical job. Look at that. All across the front here, we have five women from USF near the front of this race. You do not see that every day, especially at a, at a big meet like this. have a schedule 
as this Roy Griak Invitational continues at 12 p.m., we're going to have the Boys High School Gold 5K. 12.40, we have the Girls High School 5K. And then our final events, the Maroon 5K High School Race and 205, the Maroon 5K Girls. So still a ton of action left. We're going to finish this college uh, event uh, right after this race. But USF... Unbelievable start. They were sixth last year at the NCAA Cross Country Championships. And in the spring, they returned Taylor, who's out in front. And I'm going to welcome back Taylor out doing <laughs> interviews with some of the men, uh, top finishers, and, and the winner there. But we have a really strong contingent here of USF women. Yes, a lot of those USF women out in green. You can see at least four or five in that top pack. And I'm sure you mentioned already their number one runner, Charlotte Taylor, NCAA champion in the 10K, first NCAA title in program history. And so they, it is all green, all, it's <laughs> all USF green. It's remarkable how many of them. I mean, it's more than five now. That's the whole team. Yeah. That's seven. Yeah. And so I, I got to go out there a couple weeks ago, shoot a workout Wednesday with the Dons, and I really, really love the way Coach Helen Lehman Winters situated this workout. They all – so the workout was uh, one quick 600 to start where they all did together, and then they did two by two miles of tempo separated into groups, and then the last interval was 1,000 where they all – Again, finish together. I really like that style. Starting together, finishing together. Tempo might have been different groups, different paces. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of like that developing, you know, team. It develops team unity, you know. It, like, gets everyone excited for each other and, you know, thinking about each other at the beginning and the end. And they're clearly starting together with that mentality. This is kind of like the Mighty Ducks V. You know, you have the front, and then you have the V. The Don's V. The Don's V. I like it. This is incredible to see. I mean, did you expect at the, the beginning half of this race at least to see all these women from USF up here at the front? You know, they proved themselves last fall with that sixth-place finish at the NCAA Cross Country Championships, the best finish by that program in history. And as they crossed the mile mark, 535. Woo! Quick. I like it. Juicy. That is that is juicy. I like it a lot. So as you can see, you can see the course on the right side of your screen. They are coming around this turn and pretty quickly here and then they will hit 2k. And so for all you can see, it is just USF. I love it. Their whole team up front. And so we got to go through this team. So running for the Dons today, they've, they've entered they've, they've entered quite a bit of women. They've got Elena Orichova, Charlotte Taylor, Elizabeth Bird, Ellie Wallace, Emma Starr, Frederick Latraverse, Isabel Brower, Josephine Breistein, Kelsey Nielsen, Leah Mayer, Marie Bouchard, Tatiana Schult, Valerie Almanza, and Veronica Pizik. So very solid group, kind of a mix. You know, some seniors, a couple freshmen mixed up in there. And, uh, but I would say overall, it's a little bit of an older squad, a lot of juniors and seniors. And so they've probably gone over the 2K split by now as they take on this downhill. Looking solid. So the Don's number one runner, Charlotte Taylor, again, NCAA champion in the 10K World Championship competitor as well. She ran for Great Britain at Worlds in London this past August. And so we shot her do her first workout back from that experience. So Don's... Working together, starting to pull away, and they've they've run this course 
for the past two years in a row. And uh, a lot of the same women. So they are very familiar with just how tough the Roy Griac course is. The question is, do you think they will sustain this start? You know, obviously it's, it's a little bit of a mental maneuvering to have, you know, your entire team in front of the field. But, you know, how much do you think they'll sustain this control? Do you feel like they can? I think they can. I mean, they they proved just how powerful they can be last fall. And they didn't lose that many people. And, I mean, they they look solid now. I, I think they can maintain it. But some of the other teams to keep an eye on and uh, can kind of see on your screen um, the Iowa State women. Iowa State women and the Minnesota women who are ranked number 19 in the coaches poll uh, and Michigan State as well. So um, Iowa State, more of a younger squad, a lot of really talented freshmen on their team. So you can kind of see some Iowa State up in that front pack. Minnesota as well saw at least two, three, four, I think, so Minnesota ladies. Iowa State's in the maroon, Minnesota's in the gold. Uh, they both have similar colors, but obviously, you know, Minnesota has chosen to wear their gold in this race. So Don's putting four up top, leading this race. Very good sign at this point in the 6K. And it is relative, it is still early, but I mean, they are already forming their own little unit up top. Not little, I mean, there's four of them all running together, solid. And while Charlotte's on your right here, on your left, I think that's Veronica Pizek, who's a junior. And so the, the USF women, a lot of, a lot of these ladies are um, international stars from uh, Great Britain and Estonia and just all over um, all over Europe coming to San Francisco and just making an immediate impact. So how do you think San Francisco's building a program there after having spent maybe some time with them? What do you think they're doing right in building that program? Um, I think Coach Helen Lehman. So Helen Lehman Winters has been at USF for, I think, almost like 15 years or so. Um, so a, a while. And she has basically built this program from, um, from you know, humble beginnings. And each year they've, they've gotten, you know, they've made little jumps, little jumps. And I remember talking to her. Uh, last year just about you know where they started and um, you know she was in, going in she had such high expectations because she had come from the high school ranks where she um, had coached some pretty dominant teams at, at Cron de Led and you know different Bay Area high schools and had these big expectations coming in and then you know it turned out to be harder than she anticipated when she got to USF and took a little longer than I think she would have liked but the last few years, um, things have come together. And I think it was 2011 when she had her first team make it to uh, the NCAA Cross Country Championships. Um, and they, I think, finished in, in the teens. So solid, solid first start for them. And then they've just been building each year. And uh, she, she's done a great job of um, just building the women's and the men too they've had um some solid individuals the past few years and um yeah and so this will give you a better idea of where they're at they've passed 3k they're between 3k and 4k now as they zigzag through the forest a little bit and the USF trio has just formed their own top pack, that strong unit. No one is willing to go with them. No one's trying to break that up. I think confidence breeds confidence, and especially 
to have a, a champion in your midst, someone who's he's really uh, emerging uh, in that in the college ranks and even beyond that, I think that you know helps just sort of build momentum for the rest of your ladies. And you know, as you can see, San Francisco has established firm control in this race. You know, we have a top three, but also a few of their teammates are still building in those second and third packs. So San Francisco really doing a wonderful job here in this 6K, um, positioning itself throughout the race. So Isab Isabel Bauer, the sophomore, Veronica Pizik, and Charlotte Taylor just looking so strong, working together. It's, I mean, it feels so good to have your teammates running with you, but to be at the front and running with you, that's just gotta be such a powerful feeling. And it's gotta make the race so much easier. This course is so tough. And to have your teammates by your side has just got to be such a relief. And they're just crushing it. And so it's a little tough to tell from this angle, but behind them, we've got more team battles going on. I mean, as of right now, USF is, uh, looks like they're dominating that team race. Uh, but you gotta look out for Iowa State. You gotta look out for Minnesota, the, the hometown heroes ranked uh, ranked number 19 in the coaches poll and uh, you know have that NCAA qualifying streak to their name I think they're at 12 years going to qualifying for NCAAs which is not very many teams have done that it's hard to do and from this side angle you, I think you can see the power and the strength of, of Charlotte Taylor in its finest form um, you can see how, how fast she's moving, one, but also her stride length and the way she's sort of striking the ground. So that's a great view. If there's any, I think, women's team that uh, I think has a shot here to maybe do some things in the back end, is it's Minnesota. Uh, it's a team that isn't ranked on your, on your Flow uh, 50 ranking or your Flow XC rankings. And uh, I think they're on their home course. And they have a lot of, or they have ample opportunity to sort of prove themselves here. So I think Minnesota is one of those teams to look out for. Absolutely, it's a perfect opportunity to do it. They've got, you know, several ranked teams to uh, contend with. You know, Iowa State, Michigan State, USF. It looks like USF has this in the bag, as you can see. That fourth athlete, in your view, is also a USF runner. So it's just, you know. As of right now, if they keep this going, the win is going to be easy peasy. And I'm assuming their number five is not far behind. So are you an annual Flow Pro subscriber on FlowTrack? If not, upgrade to an annual subscription in account settings to gain access to premium content on every site in the Flow Sports Network. This includes more than 1,000 live events, original documentaries, exclusive training and technique videos, and more. All of this is accessible to annual subscribers to any Flow Sports site, so make sure you register for Flow Pro subscriber status. And some of the cross country meets you can look forward to watching on our live stream schedule. We have Wisconsin Invitational. We've got the Pre-National Invitational. We've got the D3, D1, D2 NCAA Championships. I mean, this is pretty uh, unprecedented in flow track history. We've got it all live and starting, but it all starts here at Roy Griak. This is kind of the season kickoff where points are earned and standings and rankings start to really shake out and we get to see who did their summer training, <laughs> <laughs> who went to altitude, who you know put in those miles, and Charlotte Taylor, uh, we know for a fact, put in those miles. Saw her compete, have that awesome spring season where she won the NCAA 10K the crown, excuse me, yeah. and go on to compete at the World Championships for her country. That had to have been such a special experience. And uh, she is just carrying that momentum into this fall. She's keeping up with the pace truck, obviously, too. Yeah. I mean, she, they have to go a little bit quicker, it looks like, for Charlotte yeah. Taylor. 
But she, you look at her stride, so compact, uh, but it's so fluid. You know, she really uh, generates a lot of power uh, through that stride. Uh, and she's impressive. I mean, take you know a look at her right now. She's obviously really comfortable, and uh, she looks really good at this point. She does, utilizing those downhills. Her teammate, uh, Veronica, is, you know, the gap is forming just a little bit, but she's not too far behind as long as she, you know, maintains her distance. It'll be fine. Not too much to go in the race as they... Uh, are heading into about a thousand meters to go or so. Probably less than that, actually. Here's a question. Griak's a great place to sort of set a precedent for the rest of the season. They finished sixth last year at the NCAA championships as a team. Do you think with this performance, it changes maybe a little bit of your views on this team and what they are capable of doing? You know, the they're, they were on paper supposed to win this race and I think I'm not I expected them to win this race but I wasn't expecting them to put five in the top five <laughs> um, I mean they're obviously extremely strong they proved that last fall they proved it in track with individual performances and um, I guess I I'm pretty shocked to see I mean they could score at least four in the top four Maybe five. I don't know where their fifth is as of right now, but I would assume she's in the top ten. And this long shot, you see every single runner is USF right there. You so. see that green. Wow. It is, I mean, it is a dominant run by the Dons. And you can kind of see in the distance um, the trailing runners from other teams. I mean, that there's like probably a 200 meter gap between Charlotte and you know the the trailing pack uh, less than that I would say but uh, you know the girls immediately behind her are all her teammates I wonder if she's looked back at all if she knows just how <laughs> you know she doesn't need to look back you can see Helen right there on the sideline cheering her ladies on as they come into that final stretch the last little hill as soon as they crest this hill it's downhill into the finish and they're just grinding just grinding those last moments but wow what a dominant run for the dons as long as they maintained and we can we'll be able to tell at this angle veronica right behind charlotte This is like a battlefield scene. Them just coming <laughs> up the hill. There's another Don, Isabel. And I think and there's another, fourth. a fourth. There wow. This that might a be a record team score. That's a great snapshot. I, th I think Callie Logue of Iowa State is the fifth right now. She has one of her teammates uh, right behind her. Veronica's past Charlotte, though. She used that downhill to get her teammate right at the end. Veronica and Charlotte, 1 2. Veronica goes 2107. Charlotte, her teammate, 2109, gets sniffed right at the line by her teammate. And we, it's just Don City. Can't even be mad. Look at them. They're hugging right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Just Don City. Look at that. Okay, so they got four. Marie Bouchard, third, 2128. And this is the critical runner here, but I, you know, they didn't get the perfect five, but you know, this is impressive. I think one of their teammates is right here, maybe top 10 or 11 or 12, but she's gonna come through the line right about now. Yeah, and and the individual results are a little off. Uh, Callie wasn't fourth, uh, another USF athlete was fourth, but as soon as they shake out, we'll, we'll know for sure. And there's another Dawn see a lot of Minnesota that's a good sign too for the home team but wow what a run for USF and if you know you're coaching USF at this point you use this performance as a model this is the model we want to we want to